In this talk, I'm going to explain how crowdsourcing can help to stop land grabbing in Ethiopia. Okay, I'm going to start things off with a map of the world. This is a world captured in a way that we should all be familiar with. Now here's quite a different view of the world, where the size of the country represents the number of deaths that have occurred as a result of drought events in the past. Three stand out in particular, Ethiopia, Sudan, and Mozambique. But drought is not the only driver of food insecurity. Another factor that could radically affect the local livelihoods of farmers is land grabbing. This representation of the world captures the situation and shows that Africa is a prime focus of this phenomenon. Land grabbing is the large-scale acquisition of land by domestic and international companies, governments and individuals. One of the big motivators for land grabbing has been using the land for lucrative bioenergy production. This can result in displaced populations and negative effects on local livelihoods. This will ultimately impact food security, especially if the local farmers are relying on this land to survive. Ethiopia is one of the most affected countries, which is made worse by the fact that we don't actually have in our possession an accurate and detailed cropland or settlement map of Ethiopia. Ironically, a good map actually does exist, but it's not open source, so we're missing a vital piece of information to cross-reference land acquisitions with people who actually live on and farm the land. To illustrate just how different things are in Ethiopia, let's compare a typical family in the United States with one that lives in Ethiopia. Here are some statistics for life expectancy, income, average household size, and access to medical care. Now let's contrast this with Ethiopia, where life expectancy and income are lower, average household size is larger, and access to medical care is worse. So the big question is, how can families like this help families like this in Ethiopia in order to potentially stop land grabbing? A very simple answer, by getting involved through crowdsourcing. By asking ordinary citizens to help collect and contribute information online, we can build vast open source databases that can be used for many different scientific applications. At IASA, we have built a crowdsourcing tool called GeoWiki. Using Google Earth imagery, we ask the crowd to help us identify different types of land cover and build a better map of the land surface. We produced a modified version of our tool in order to address the issue of land grabbing in Ethiopia and participated in the recent USAID hackathon. The idea is very simple. If areas have settlements or areas are already cultivated and these same areas are where large scale land acquisitions will take place, then there will be undoubtedly conflicts, displacements of population and effects on the local farmers and their livelihoods. Using Google Earth, we asked hackathon participants to examine the imagery over Ethiopia to identify different levels of settlement and cultivation from none to high. We provided examples online to help hackathon participants identify these patterns. We set an original goal of 50,000 points to be collected, which represents roughly 5% of the area of Ethiopia. During the weekend of the hackathon, we collected more than 2,000 samples of cultivation and settlement, and this is what the crowd-created map looked like after the weekend. We then tapped into our network of GeoWiki volunteers and continued the hackathon, and we now have a map that looks like this. This map currently has almost 77,500 points and shows us very clearly where the patterns of cultivation are in the country. And here is what the crowdsource map of settlements looks like. All of this data can be freely downloaded and used in other applications. Our next step is to work with the Land Matrix project, which contains a database of land acquisitions. The actual locations will shortly become open source. We will then overlay the crowdsourced map with these areas of land acquisition. We will then be able to identify clear areas of conflict, determine where existing populations may be affected, and raise awareness of land grabbing. Ultimately, we hope that this may contribute to stopping some acquisitions in the future. But this is only one example of how crowdsourcing can be used to collect information through GeoWiki. We have many other GeoWiki branches, as well as a mobile application and Facebook games to make collecting the information fun. Eventually, this will lead to better maps of cropland, biomass, wilderness, land cover, and so on, all of which will become open source. So all of you here can help us by contributing through GeoWiki, whether you use our system or help spread the word. We do truly believe that by improving our basic knowledge about land cover and opening this up for anyone to use, it will ultimately lead to a better, more food secure, and environmentally sustainable world. Thank you very much.